The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Chapter 12, The Search for the Wicked Witch. The soldier with the green whiskers led them through the streets of the Emerald City until they reached the room where the guardian of the gates lived. This officer unlocked their spectacles and put them back in his great box, and then he politely opened the gate for their friends. Which road leads to the Wicked Witch of the West? asked Dorothy. There is no road, answered the guardian of the gates. No one ever wishes to go that way. How, then, are we to find her? inquired the girl. Well, that will be easy, replied the man. For when she knows you are in the country of the Winkies, she will find you and make you all her slaves. Perhaps not, said the scarecrow, for we need to destroy her. Oh, that is different, said the guardian of the gates. No one has ever destroyed her before, so I naturally thought she would make slaves of you, as she has of the rest. But take care, she is wicked and fierce, and may not allow you to destroy her. Keep, keep to the west, or the sun sets. You cannot fail to find her. They thanked him, and bade him goodbye, and turned towards the west, making, walking over fields of soft grass, dotted here and there with daisies and buttercups. Dorothy still wore the pretty silk dress she had put on in the palace, but now, to her surprise, she found it was no longer green, but pure white. The ribbon around Toto's neck had also lost its green color and was as white as Dorothy's dress. The Emerald City was soon left far behind. As they advanced, the ground became rougher and hillier, for there were no farms nor houses in this country of the West, and the ground was untilled. In the afternoon, the sun shone hot in their faces, for there were no trees to offer them shade, so that before night, Dorothy and Toto and the lion were tired, and they down upon the grass and fell asleep with the woodman and the scarecrow keeping watch. Now the wicked witch of the west had but one eye, yet that was as powerful as a telescope and could see everywhere. So as she sat in the door of her castle, she happened to look around and saw Dorothy lying asleep with her friends all about her. They were a long distance off, but the wicked witch was angry to find them in her country. So she blew upon a silver whistle that hung around her neck. At once, there came running to her from all directions a pack of great wolves. They had long legs and fierce eyes and sharp teeth. Go to these those people, said the witch, and tear them to pieces. Are you not going to make them your slaves? asked the leader of the wolves. No, she answered. One is tin and one of straw. One is a girl and another a lion. None of them is fit to work, so you may tear them into small pieces. Very well, said the wolf, and he dashed away at full speed, followed by the others. It was lucky the scarecrow and the woodman were wide awake and heard the wolves coming. This is my fight, said the woodman, so get behind me and I will meet them as they come. He seized his axe, which had he had made very sharp, and as the leader of the wolves came on, the tin woodman swung his arm and chopped the wolf's head off from its body so it, that it immediately died. As soon as he could raise his axe, another wolf came up, and he also fell under the sharp edge of the tin woodman's weapon. There were forty wolves, and forty times a wolf was killed, so that, they, that at last they all lay dead in a heap before the woodman. Then he put down his axe and sat beside the scarecrow, who said, It was a good fight, friend. They waited until Dorothy awoke the next morning. The little girl was quite frightened when she saw the great pile of shaggy wolves, but the tin woodman told her all. She thanked him for saving them and sat down to breakfast, after which they started again upon their journey. Now this same morning, the wicked witch came to the door of her castle and looked out with her one eye that she could see far off. She saw all her wolves lying dead and the strangers still traveling through her country. This made her angrier than before, and she blew her silver whistle twice. Straight away, a great flock of wild crows came flying towards her, enough to darken the sky. And the wicked witch said to the king crow, Fly at once to the strangers, peck out their eyes, and tear them to pieces. The wild crows flew in one great flock towards Dorothy and her companions. When the little girl saw them coming, she was afraid. But the scarecrow said, This is my battle. Lie down beside me, and you will not be harmed. So they all lay upon the ground except the scarecrow, and he stood up and stretched out his arms. And when the crows saw him, they were frightened, as these birds always are by scarecrows, and did not dare to come any nearer. But the king crow said, It is only a stuffed man. I will peck his eyes out. 
The king crow flew at the scarecrow, who caught it by the head and twisted its neck until it died. And then another crow flew at him, and the scarecrow twisted its neck also. There were forty crows, and forty times the scarecrow twisted a neck, until at last all were lying dead beside him. Then he called to his companions to rise, and again they went upon their journey. When the wicked witch looked out again and saw all her crows lying in a heap, she got into a terrible rage and blew her whistle three times upon her silver whistle. Forthwith, there was heard a great buzzing in the air, and a swarm of black bees came towards her. Go to the strangers and sting them to death, commanded the witch, and the bees turned and flew rapidly until they came to where Dorothy and her friends were walking. But the woodman had seen them coming, and the scarecrow had decided what to do. Take out my sh take out my straw and scatter it all over the little girl and the dog and the lion, he said to the woodman. And the bees could cannot sting them. This the woodman did, and as Dorothy lay close beside the lion and held Toto in her arms, the straw covered them completely. The bees came and found no one but the woodman to sting, so they flew at him and broke off all their stings against the tin without hurting the woodman at all. And as bees cannot live when their stings are broken, that was the end of the black bees, and they lay scattered thick about the woodman like little heaps of fine coals. Then Dorothy and the lion got up, and the little girl helped the tin woodman put the straw back into the scarecrow again, until he was as good as ever. So they started upon their journey once more. The wicked witch was so angry when she saw her black bees in little heaps of fine coal that she stamped her feet and tore her hair and gnashed her teeth. And then she called a dozen of her slaves, who were the Winkies, and gave them sharp spears, telling them to go to the strangers and destroy them. The Winkies were not a brave people, but they had to do as they were told, so they marched away until they came near to Dorothy. Then the lion gave a great roar and sprang towards them, and the poor Winkies were so frightened that they ran back as fast as they could. When they returned to the castle, the Wicked Witch beat them well with a strap and sent them back to their work, after which she sat down to think what she should do next. She could not understand how all her plans to destroy these strangers had failed. However, she was a powerful witch as well as a wicked one, and she soon made up her mind how to act. There was in her cupboard a golden cup with a circle of diamond and rubies running around it. This golden cup had a charm. Whoever owned it could call up three times upon the winged monkeys, who would obey any order they were given. But no person could command these strange creatures more than three times. Twice already, the wicked witch had used the charm of the cap. Once was when she was made, she had made the Winkies her slave and set herself to rule over their country. The Wink Monkeys had helped her do this. The second time was when she had fought against the great Oz himself and drove him out of the land of the east, the west. The Winked Monkey had also helped her in doing this. Only once more could she use this golden cap, for which reason she did not like to do so until all her other powers were exhausted. But now that her fierce wolves and her wild crows and her stinging bees were gone and her slaves had been scared away by the cowardly lion, she saw there was only one way left to destroy Dorothy and her friends. So the wicked witch took the golden cap from her cupboard and placed it upon her head. And she stood upon her left foot and said slowly, Eepy, peepy, khaki. Next she stood upon her right foot and said, Hello, holo, hello. After this, she stood upon both feet and cried in a loud voice, Z Z Z Z Zeek. Now the charm began to work. The sky was darkened, and a low rumbled sound was heard in the air. There was a rushing of many wings, a great chattering and laughing, and the sun came out of the dark sky to show the wicked witch surrounded by a crowd of monkeys, each with a pair of immense and powerful wings on his shoulders. One much bigger than the other seemed to be their leader. He flew close to the witch and said, you have God for us? For the third and last time, what do you command? Go to the strangers who are within my land and destroy them all except the lion, said the wicked witch. Bring that beast to me, for I have a mind to harness him like a horse and make him work. Your commands shall be obeyed, said the leader. Then with a great deal of chattering and noise, the winged monkeys flew away to the place where Dorothy and her friends were walking. Some of the monkeys seized the tin woodman and carried him through the air until they were over a country thickly covered with sharp rocks. 
There they dropped the poor woodman, who fell a great distance to the rocks, where he lay so battered and dented that he could neither move nor groan. Other